Welcome to NET Vapor Reviews. Today's review is a tutorial that is meant for those who emailed me. Um, quite a few emailed me to um, if I can give some kind of guidance on how to rewick or wick uh, initially first time a mouse to long RTE. This is not m this video is not really for seasoned vapors who already got this information and they know how to do it. It's meant for those who um, been vaping on stock oil, on pot kits, and want to upgrade to master long RTE and finding it difficult to um, wick right. Now, there is a few rules when it comes to wicking right. Um, how, what lengths to cut it, um, what width, and when do you need thinning, when don't you know, need thinning, the cotton ends, and how to tuck in the cotton into the juice wells. He has a few guidelines that's really common sense, but if you haven't got the knowledge, it wouldn't help that it's common sense because you haven't got a starting point. Um, so since it's now coming already mid-December, I decided to actually put aside time to do it for those who need it. Those who are already seasoned vapors, I don't think you'll gain much more information from this video, uh, but obviously you can watch it for information only, but yeah, most probably you'll know everything that I already, I will be saying in the close-up, but for those who asked for it, um, yeah, so finally I, I did it for you, okay. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go to a close-up where I re-wicked um, um, six mouse to long RTAs, six. And if you look below, you'll see the list. Obviously, if you watch the close-up, you'll see the list. You'll know which ones I'm talking about. And those six represent really old-style deck and juice well sizes. And um, yeah, so... Most probably one of your master long RTAs will um, fit the ones that I have done in this close up. Yeah, more or less. So, um, what we're going to do now, we'll go down to that close up that I've done, uh, and hopefully it's beneficial to you. I did not speed it up. Uh, this video is going to be like 40 minutes, including the starting section and the last one. Um, is no point me speeding it up because this information is meant for those who need to follow step by step. Um, yeah, so they'll have all the information in hand without fast forwarding and explaining slowly how to do it. And uh, that's the only way to do it for me. Yeah. So um, let's go down to the close up and then I'll see you back on top just to finalize it. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so um, in this close-up, I'm going to show you a few different designs of decks um, and different design of uh, juice wells. So like this, by the end of this close-up, you would know um, this, I think, represents the classic RTA decks. One of them will suit yours. And you'll be able to know what size to cut your Muji pads, when does it need thinning, how do you thin it, you know, everything to do with Muji pads and wicking your RTA. It is very easy. There is a few rules to know, and as soon as you know them, you'll be able to wick any RTA uh, without no problem. Okay. So let's first look at the various designs, and then we're going to go through uh, each uh, one at a time. Okay, so this is the Spiker Pro, for instance. So this is a two and a half millimeter inner diameter coil. You can see the juice wells are not massively big. And you can see where the wick is going to pick up the liquid from. So in this type of design, you don't need a lot of cotton, right? This is the Penedant. So you can see the two holes that the wick goes through <coughs> to pick up the liquid from the bottom here because this is a raised deck also not too uh, not big fairly small so again a two and a half millimeter coil but here you need the wick longer now this is 
the replay that is an RDTA, but the bishop is an RTA that the liquid comes from above, but this comes from the bottom, but never, nevertheless, the wick here is in a different shape completely. It's in a straight line. Here it picks it up from these two tubes that you can see here, and the bishop would pick it up from the juice that's coming from above. Um, but the wicking is the same idea. So here you need less cotton, less length. Now this is the aroma is a classic that this I've got a three millimeter in the diameter coil because as you can see these dew swells are fairly big and in order not to have leaks you want more wick so therefore you use a three millimeter in the diameter coil and here is a classic drop from the coil straight into the juice well and it picks it up from the bottom as you can see there is holes and so it sucks up the liquid from the end of the wick right now this is you don't see this any much anymore especially in mouse too long this is the eh pro true tank with nature vape yeah and this is a style that you put the wick through and it's sort of in these channels there's no compartment there's no juice well as such because the juice comes from all the way around and the wick picks it up. So we're gonna to come to this type of design in a minute. Now, so that is that. So we'll go through this in a minute. Um, this is the Expomizer V4. So um, you can see the juice wells are fairly large. You've got three holes on either side. This is a two and a half millimeter in the diameter coil. So this needs more wick. So the rule is you always check your juice wells. So we'll take these two classics. This is the Penedant. You can see the difference between them. This is wider, bigger, more holes for the juice flow, less holes here, smaller. So you need more wick here, less wick here, right? So we'll start first with the one that does, need, does not need thinning. So what size wick do we need for such a tank? So let's have a look. This is a Japanese Muji pad. I will show you the, what I'm using. This is it here, and you can see it's 60 millimeters by 50 millimeters. They're all more or less the same idea. Organic Japanese Muji pads. For me, this works perfect. Never had any issues with them. They're so easy to cut the ties. Um, and after a while you wouldn't need to think twice you will know exactly what size you need for what tank so we'll start first with the Expomizer V4 that you need more wick wide now but there is a limit on how much cotton you can insert in a two and a half millimeter in a diameter coil so what you need is that's the beauty of a Muji pad that you can get the width and just peel off layers to thin them out and if need be you can rake out the sides but we'll go through it stage by stage so let me cut off a piece according to what I know this tank needs and then I will measure it so this is the size I normally cut for the Exomizer V4 now I've got a ruler here let's have a look and see the size so you can see here um let me do this upside down this is one centimeter and these are oh, one minute again let me do it right yeah here we are am i doing it right uh, ah, here we are that's it so you can see the size here right so let's take the piece of wick and put it so this is as you can see nine millimeters yeah so that is the guidance for a juice well that is fairly large and you don't need thinning really it's the bit but the width is the most important nine millimeters okay uh, you wouldn't have to measure it every single time you do this after a while you already work it out yourself now the thickness is a bit too thick for a two and a half millimeter in a diameter coil. So what you do is you just peel off the outer layer. Yeah, 
us like this. And now we come to a very important rule. You pinch one side. Yeah, okay, that's not the rule yet. But now, if when you insert the coil, the wick into the coil and you start pulling, first of all, this you don't have to round this up, you don't have to roll it because the coil automatically would sort of round up the shape of the wick. So when you start pulling, you feel resistance, but not too much resistance, meaning that when you pull it, the coil will not sort of pull out of the central position it's in now, then you know it's the right thickness for this coil. If when you pull the wick, it moves the coil completely out of place, pull it out again gently, take off another layer and do it again until you feel that the wick is going through with resistance but not over. Yeah, so I'm moving it from side to side. It's moving the coil slightly. I feel in my fingers the resistance but not enough to move the coil out of place. Then you know you've got the right thickness. Okay, that rule applies to all coils, no matter what size they are. If you feel that if when you pull it, it moves the coil out of place, that is too thick. It's going to choke the liquid. It wouldn't absorb it properly. Peel off a layer, do it again. Too thick, peel off another layer. Do layer at a time. Right, now, rule number two, how to cut um, so this does need thinning because as we said the juice well is quite large and you want it to cover the whole width so you don't have to thin further the end bits so how do you know where to cut it so that comes rule number two you always check to see where the, the wick is going to pick up the liquid from here it's picking up from these tubes so that's no problem you just make sure that they cut flush above these tubes right this one here is going to pick up the wick the liquid from here so you need to cut it that it should touch you never want the wick to fold and to be condensed on the bottom because that's the most crucial point for the wick to pick up the liquid so you want it to be hanging loosely and fluffy but touching where the liquid will be <clears throat> that will be able to absorb it easy to the coil um, in this case is the same idea um, but this is the penadant but the liquid is absorbed in the bottom of this juice well by these two holes so you have to cut it in a length that it would cover these two holes um, <coughs> this is the aromizer classic this is a three millimeter in a diameter you see where the juice wells end right in the bottom and there is two holes there to pick up the liquid from so here you need a lot more wick that's why I've got three millimeter and you need it fairly long to reach the bottom so always look where the um, juice will accumulate so in this case and now what we're doing the extramizer v4 is right by the hole so what you do is you fold the wick to those three holes press down you get a bit of a dent in the wick and cut and then fold again and you can see it's covering those holes right so you know you've got the right length the second side is easy because you can just follow the first and you fold yeah and if it's a bit too long just move it and try it again perfect you see it's covering those holes so what we do is now you fluff this up very, um, very well and insert the coil by lifting up and down with a tool or tweezer I like using a flat tool like a screwdriver it's just easier for me and now you can see why I wanted the width that is covering all three holes of this of this juice well juice flow yeah I do the same here and 
can just lift up and down so like this the ends are not folded they're just hanging down freely so this now is done the right way so now let's go now to the penadant so let's say i've got the penadant right you've got similar deck style that's a gta raised deck so what you do is um, very simple we'll follow the rules that we spoke about first so rule number one check the coil size this is a two and a half millimeter in the diameter check the openings of rule number two checks the opening where the wick goes in this is fairly small check where the um, wick is going to pick up the liquid and here you need quite a long fall so we take a muji pad again and this time i'm going to cut it a bit thinner because you don't need so much the width so this is roughly the size and we'll measure it to make sure where is the there we go and this is around I would say the eight millimeter and not seven yeah one one two three four five six seven millimeter seven millimeter cut so you know this is for thinner juice well and, and the juice um, ports now again this thickness is too thick so we follow the second rule of how to know how thick your wick should be always peel off one layer at a time so like this you um, can thin it further because if, if you do it too thin you're going to need to use a, another piece of wick so uh, we pinch one side and we insert sometimes you need to pinch it quite a few times because this is yeah now again we come to the rule of how to know how thick the wick is if you pull it and it is very very tight you know this is too thick so in this case it is too thick because i can feel if i pull it i'll manage but it's gonna i feel it's too much resistance so what i do is i peel off one more piece very easy yeah and that is the beauty of muji's pinch again insert now you see it's going in much easier right now um, i check the length of where the wick would absorb the liquid from as we did the other way you, the other one you put press it down cut and you know that this is the right length just a bit more to cut because you don't want it to be folded on the bottom you want it to touch the deck don't forget it's going to be a bit um, a longer because it's going through these holes so you don't have the extra distance of this fold here over the ring so this is the right size and we'll do the other side oops yeah perfect now see this is a bit too thick to get into these type of little juice well so what you do is you take a tweezer or a sharp uh, scissor the way i have now and just rake out hold one side rake out a bit so let's you thin it out and cut it yeah now it's a bit thinner this one doesn't need much thinning sometimes that happens the one side is thicker than the other side then what you do is you just insert it the way uh, we'd inserted the other one but in this case you just um, plug it down the hole here and make sure you see that the wick is not so thick that you can still see your tool going through so it means there's space 
if your tool cannot go through this juice po uh, wick port you know it the wick is too thick so it's simply not going to do the job it's meant to do now you see where the wick is touching you know exactly that's touching the right place the liquid will get down here and be absorbed by the wick and you do the other side the same thing gently push it downwards and again you can see where the wick is reaching to the bottom of this deck so this really is done and this is how you do the penedant or any other um, raised gta style deck okay so that is this one now so let me take this off so this you now you moisten your wick and put in the tank fill up the tank and vape away right so now we're going to try the aroma as a classic which is a three millimeter inner diameter coil it's got bigger juice wells and you need quite a lot of wick to avoid leaking so this piece of wick that i'm going to cut now is the one of the th the, um, the widest one that you need for mouth to long rta so um let me cut a piece and then we'll measure it so this is uh, a piece this is the thickest the widest piece that you need for mouth to long RT obviously direct to long you can use bigger sizes as well because they're much bigger coils and direct to long needs a lot more um, wick normally yeah RTA and RDA but this is a mouth to long um, so let's check the width on this one and this is roughly um, uh, one centimeter yep you can see without flattening it exactly one centimeter 10 millimeters this is the biggest so the Exformizer V4 was 9, um, the Penedant was 8, 7, 7 or 8, and this is 10 millimeters, okay? So, so we'll follow now the rules we learned up to now. We thin out the outer layers and you pinch one side and insert in the coil sometimes you need to twist a few times they should be able to get through now here i need a tweezer because the, the shape of this deck okay now <clears throat> again we follow the second rule is how to know if the wick is too thick or not you start pulling and you can see it's going in very easy uh, with just a bit of resistance so you know it's the right thickness and then again we follow the second rule where it would the, the third rule where would the wick pick up the liquids so that's the bottom of here so you know you need to cut it right down to this white o-ring that's the bottom of the juice uh, juice well so you press it down and you get sort of like a line and we cut it fold it again you see it's reached the bottom of this yeah and you do the second side is the same follow the first and if you're in doubt check it make sure yeah perfect give this this does not need thinning at all so what you do is you give it a good fluff lift and lower now this has to be done gently because you don't want to um, you don't want to stay fluffy so take your time and eventually you'll find its place and get in to the right place yeah to the juice wells 
same here. That's it. Keep them fluffy so it covers the whole width of the juice well. And we'll pick up any liquid that gets down into the juice wells and yeah, no leaks at all. Perfect. Okay, so this is the Adam Aromizer Classic. Now we're going to go to um, the Bishop. Well, not the Bishop, the replay, but it's the same idea as the Bishop. The only difference is that here picks up the liquid from these tubes and in the bishop it gets it from the top from the above it so this is very easy to do so this is a two and a, <coughs> two and a half millimeter in the diameter <coughs> um, so i've got here already a piece and this is again um, around we'll say the eight millimeter yeah so that's your guide between 8 to 10 millimeter. Always thin off the top layer. Another layer a bit, just a bit too thick. Now this is a 2.5 millimeter, but it doesn't want too thick because it's picking up the liquid from the bottom. So you don't want it to be too thick. Otherwise, it will pick it up on the under layers and the top layers will remain dry. So you want to thin it out a bit more, right? So we'll pinch. The guide, guiding rule is to make sure that the wick is picking up the liquid right. And that makes common sense. That will guide you through how is the liquid reaching that cotton. Uh, now, this is a bit too thick. I can feel the resistance is a bit too much. So I'm gonna take out another layer. That's the way to do it. Take off another layer. And let me just take a tweezer. And this is much better. You see, it's going in smooth and easy with a bit of resistance. Now here is easy because you just cut it flush with those um, cotton whatever it's called um, the channels my scissors are not so good anymore and that can happen sometimes so you see now this needs a bit of trimming out because you see it's a bit too thick so what you do is you take your scissors or your tweezers and you just comb out a bit. Open it a bit so like this. And then trim again. that's it and now you can see it is the, exactly the right way maybe it's just true you have to make sure that it's completely trimmed flush but this is the style of the bishop and the replay and the f uh, well the fab is not quite because it's right over the post um, but quite a few others um, this type of design it's very reminiscent in the in the in the AIO and the RBA style so you can see how it works. It's flush against the end of these juice channels. It will pick up the liquid and it's not thick. So it will absorb and feed the coil in a straight line. And yeah, that's one, that's that style. Right, so to finish off this close up, we'll just look at the last uh, last one here, the True Tank, uh, EH Pro and Nature Vape that I enjoy very much. Um, so you can see how this fall is, it's like a juice, well it's not a juice well as such, we went through it, so the wick has to hang freely and loosely in this 
little uh, indent or channel from either side. Now this is a three millimeter inner diameter. Um, just to confirm that. I sometimes use here two and a half, and sometimes three. Yeah, it is a three. Um, yeah, so okay. So here we've got another piece of wick. According to the measurements we did last time, this is around between nine to ten millimeter width. Now here we'll thin up a bit, um, just a very little, because I'm going to thin the t the cotton ends with a tweezer that I got for this one. Yeah, I insert it. And you can see it's moving in freely, no problem at all. And again, we'll cut it according to where the wick is going to pick up the liquid. That's very important on any RTA. Um, and just cut by the dent. So you can see that it's touching, just touching the bottom of the yeah, of the deck without folding. And the second side will cut similar size. I'll just have a look to see if it reaches nicely. Yep, perfect. So now what we need to do is just to thin it out because this is going to be too thick. It would not fit in properly into these two cha into this channel. So this time I got my tweezers for this one. It's a bit easier to comb out. I just didn't have the tweezers in my previous RTAs. And same here. Just pull off the bits and give it just a trim. And that is it. Now, in order to know if you've got similar style deck, so this is the GTA raise, yeah, that it's thin enough, you have to moisten it now with liquid, that I haven't got here, but if you moisten it, it will sort of um, fit in very nicely into this channel. I'll just straighten this out a bit. And the same side, the same on the other side. So if you have had liquid, it would fit in perfect into these channels. Yeah, and pick up any excess liquid. So then when you put back the tank, you will see, um, one minute, you will see the tufts ending you know the cotton ending right by the bottom where the juice gets in and will feed the cotton beautifully okay um, <clears throat> so I think we went through I've got here the, the Spiker Pro um, there's well I wanted to re-wick now um, so if we follow the rules that we learned up to now, you know, this is a two and a half millimeter in diameter. The juice wells here are medium size, not too big, not too small. It picks it up from here. So, yeah, should we go through this quickly again? Um, so we'll go through the rules quick. Check your coil in a diameter according your cut. So in this case, I need to trim this a bit. I've got this piece left. So this is around the seven to eight millimeter width. Thin it out. So this is sort of a recap. Pinch one side. Insert into the coil. And check. Is the resistance not much a bit resistance not moving the color to place you know it's the right size you lean it to where it's going to pick up the liquid from cut other side yeah fold to make sure you've got the right sizes I shorten this a bit 
Now check your juice wells to see if it needs thinning. It doesn't need any thinning this one because it's fairly um, big. Never bend if need be. Take it out and do it again. And you see now the wick is in fluffy, touching the bottom of the juice wells. The wick will absorb by the juice flow holes and you can be able to enjoy your vape. Same here. That's it. So the Spiker Pro is done. So um, I hope this was beneficial to you, um, the, the various styles. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bring, we'll come back on top and we'll just discuss it a bit further just to recap. And we'll talk about these decks that are all now being, being wicked. Yeah. <clears throat> and the Xpomizer V4 as well. Um, yeah, so, oh, we forgot this one here, the true tank. Different styles, difference, not much difference in sizes, but yeah, I'm not going to go through this, all this again. Okay, so I'll see you back on top and um, we'll finish off this tutorial. Right, so you've seen how I wick them all and it's really a few rules to follow. Um, always check your inner diameter coil to see what in diameter it is. Always check the size of the juice, uh, juice wells and determine what width to cut your cotton. Then check the length of the cotton against where the liquid would uh, access the juice wells that it will be able to pick it up. Never fold it. It should always be the right length that it should be hanging freely and fluffy to reach that liquid. Um, yeah, and always um, by inserting the wick into the coil, if there is too much of resistance, you know it's too thick, never force it through, especially not holding the coil with one finger and pulling the wick, that is uh, defeating the whole purpose, it's going to choke the cotton. So when you do it, you put it through, that is very important, they get light resistance, uh, yeah, like I've done in the close-up. So those are the, I think more or less, the rules that uh, are needed for uh, successful wicking and especially with Muji pads. I am um, a big fan of Muji pads. They're easy, they're cheap and very cheap and you can use as much as you want. If you use them after long out here, you need to re-wick very often, especially if you vape naturally extracted tobacco. And they're very easy to cut the size and they do the wicking perfectly. I would leave below the two Muji pads um, make I use. They can put in Amazon and order it. Six pounds, I think, for 200 or something like that. Very, very cheap. Okay, um, <clears throat> I hope for those who this was meant for is helpful. I would love to hear in your comments if that really helped. And um, yeah. Okay, so that was this uh, sort of unscheduled review uh, tutorial, but I did promise them I'll do it and I finally did. Okay, until the next time, take care, enjoy your vape. Bye bye for now.